our chariot for the day is Roger the Plastic Fiesta. We have made it to Inky's Autos, Mark 1 Fiesta, beige, four-door Mark 2 Escort. Massive thanks, Inky. No problem, man. Mordor is having its heart installed. Well did this. In the freezer. Don't tell my beautiful girlfriend. And there you go, bang on. Not that magnetic anymore. And I think I'm just gonna leave it as it is and send it. Nope, won't meet the latch. I uh, just noticed my light is uh, still in the engine bay. I was looking for that yesterday. Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes, and if you've been watching my videos recently, you would have seen that I'm having quite a lot of bad luck in terms of getting moored my Mordor Mark II Escort and Esther, my ST170 powered Mark I Escort, back together to get them both back on the road. In the last video, I realized that this diff that was given to me by my friend Matthew and then welded up by the guys at Inky's Autos is actually not the correct diff for my car. I think this is an Atlas diff because uh, it's a bit bigger than the English diff. But today I'm hoping to rectify this situation and actually get myself in a position where I've got the correct welded diff to fit to Maud. Our chariot for the day is Roger the Plastic Fiesta. And in his boot, we've got an actual English diff. Got to send a massive thanks out to David Coogan for sorting this diff out for me. Really, really appreciate it. And I will be removing this crown wheel and giving that back to him because uh, that matches the pinion that's in the diff that this came out of. All right, so we're now gonna make our way to Inky's Autos, which is exactly where we went exactly one week ago when we picked up the other welded diff and when Inky tried to save Maud's spring shackle. But uh, yeah, always cool to catch up with the guys at Inky's Autos. And uh, yeah, they are absolute wizards with the MIG welder. All right, we have made it to Inky's Autos. And as usual, there's plenty of classic Ford-based shenanigans going on. Tony's playing with his Mark I Fiesta that we haven't seen on the channel before. Really like the color green. And it looks really cool sitting on the Lotus Steels. Tony, of course, owns the mint red four-door Mark II Escort that we've seen loads of times, but the weather's uh, getting a bit too poor to bring that beautiful thing out. And the uh, engine hoist, we've got a 1600 crossflow and gearbox. This belongs to Dean, who owns the Project Smoothie Mark I Fiesta, but he also now owns this really cool beige four-door Mark II Escort. I wish people would stop buying beige four-door Mark II Escorts, making me feel bad about how I've neglected Heidi. But yeah, this thing's so cool. Check out the brown vinyl roof and the brown interior. Such an awesome thing. Yeah, really cool GL. Loving the mini lights that it's sitting on. And actually this thing's come with quite a few goodies bolted to it. It's got gas adjustable rear shocks and a black line LSD. Dean bought it without an engine. And as I say, that 1600 is going in today, I think. Over here, we've got Jamie's sh box that we saw last time we were down here. And yeah, down here, we've got a pair of rear suspension swing arms to go on the Sierra Estate because uh, yeah, the ones that are on the car are uh, dangerously rotten. Now, while I've been admiring all the Fords down here, Inky's already made a start on getting this diff ready for me. He's just uh, removing the crown wheel, which I'm gonna give back to David. And uh, yeah, then it'll be time to uh, wave the MIG welder out here. Again. <laughs> Deja vu for you, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Done this before. Yeah, yeah, it's all good fun though, so we love it, don't we? <laughs> The crown wheel was really difficult to remove from the diff. She'd put up a fight. Stuck on a burr. Ah. But with the burr ground away, it then slipped off nice and easily. Whee! Precise measurements, look at this, look. Wallet. With some metal cut out to reinforce the job. Safety first, yeah? <laughs> Inky attacked the diff with his MIG welder. One side down, one to go. Welding is complete. Massive thanks, Inky. No problem, man. All right, well, it is all go here. Dean's Mordor is having its heart installed.
And that's how you fit a lump into a Mark II Escort when you actually know what you're doing. Well, the guys have done me a right favour welding up Maud's new diff at such short notice. As I've said loads of times before, if you need a decent mechanic and you're anywhere near Uxbridge, which is just outside West London, definitely give Inky's Autos a shout and let them know that I sent you. I'll leave all their links and their contact details in the description. Also, check out the West London Classic Ford Facebook page, which is a group that the guys run for regular car meets and posts about what the guys are getting up to with their classic Fords. Hello, into a new day. The main objective for today is to fit Maud's new welded diff into her diff casing and make sure that the backlash and the preload on the bearings is set up correctly. And I've actually never set up a diff before, so it could be interesting. Yesterday, I went to see Oscar, who was the winner of my recent raffle and dropped off all his merchandise and his RC Mark 1 Escort that was built by Peter Smith from the CWO1 Creations YouTube channel. It was awesome to meet up with Oscar and his dad Shane as well and I took my RC Mark 1 Escort with me so that Oscar could have a little go on that rather than having to wait for his brand new batteries to charge up. Now I've actually got Maud's new welded diff in the freezer. Don't tell my beautiful girlfriend cat but yeah I've been keeping the diff nice and fresh in the freezer. Um, yeah just trying to make it shrink ever so slightly from the cold which is hopefully going to make the bearings, the new bearings that I picked up from my friends at Burton Power, uh, yeah, hopefully going to make those bearings slip on a lot easier. Now, I might have to heat the bearings up, but I want to try and see if they'll slip on without heating them up. So uh, let's see. And that is fully seated all the way around. And I think these races have to be used with the bearing that they come with. Um, so I think I'll just take a picture of this side of the diff and then put this in this box and then we'll just mark it. So I know that the one with the mark goes with the uh, one that I've just taken a picture. Oh, this hammer does actually have a little rubber bit you can add to it, so. And there is the second bearing, fully seated. It's actually giving me frostbite, keep touching it. So now I need to get myself round to Maud's garage to carry on with this job. So I'll see you around there now. All right, so over here I've got Maud's diff casing and I've just given this a clean out with brake cleaner. It does still have the old bearing races in there, which I won't be reusing. But over here I've got Maud's old welded diff with the utter mess going on in there. And one of the bearings was broken and here we've got Maud's new welded diff with the bearings that I just fitted in the kitchen. Now, before I do anything, the first job is to transfer this crown wheel over from the old welded diff to the new one. This would be a lot easier if I had a vice here. All right, so now the crown wheel's fitted, I can actually think about getting this into the diff casing. Now, one thing I'm not gonna mess with is the pinion, although that would be the first thing you sort of check and adjust if necessary when you're rebuilding a diff. Yeah, whatever it is, it's staying as it is. I'm gonna put this diff into the casing and it goes around this way. And as I remember from my kitchen, the bearing box with the mark on it goes to this side, so that will be in this bearing carrier. First, I removed the bearing caps and noted which side of the diff they came from, and then I lifted the diff into place and slid on the brand new bearing races. The bearing caps could then go back on, and then it was time to install the adjuster rings on the sides. I removed their retaining clips, but then realized I was gonna have to loosen the caps again to get the adjuster rings in. Once they were in, I nipped the bolts up, with my gun. All right, so it's all back together now. These screwing bits here aren't actually screwed in and touching the bearings, they're just in there loose, but the caps are now screwed down. And essentially, to set this up properly, we need to make sure that this part of the diff is where it needs to be because that's you know able to be adjusted left and right and that's actually what these screwing bits do and we also need to determine how much free play essentially there is between the teeth on this 
and the teeth on the pinion. If I rock this crown wheel, you know, it will rock. So it's not fully engaged with the pinion, you know? There is like a little gap uh, there, and that's what they call the backlash. So essentially it's the amount that the pinion has to turn before it actually like engages with the crown wheel, you know? Instead of being meshed like this, they're sort of like this. So there's a bit of play there. So where this is, in terms of left and right, controls that, you know? If, if you move this this way, it's gonna be obviously tighter against the tooth in the pinion. And if you move it away, then it's gonna increase that gap and increase the backlash. The other setting involves how tight this is in the casing. Because a diff is subjected to a lot of pressure, you know? The power literally goes through the diff before it gets to the wheels. So, you know, it has to be in there tight enough so that it's not gonna move around from you know the torque of the car. And yeah, as well as these screwing things controlling whereabouts the diff is, you know, how much pressure they're essentially putting on the bearings once it's all done up determines how tight this is in the casing. And the way you measure that is basically how much this casing spreads once you put these under tension. So you literally measure the distance between here and then you do them up until this distance increases by the specified amount. And we are, of course, talking about it stretching by a minuscule amount. All right, so I'm gonna do the tension on the side bearings first, because then what I can do is to set the alignment, I can just move these um, exactly the same amount each side, and then it should keep the tension the same. And according to the internet, the spread should be 0.2 to 0.25 millimeters. I think the best place to measure it from is here, both sides. Because that's an arch, essentially, the shortest distance between there and there is gonna be in the middle of that arch, right? If you just, you know, try and put tension on it so it's just the shortest possible uh, position in both of those bits. All right, so I've got a bit of tension on it and I'm getting about 111.41 millimeters. So we need somewhere in the region of 111.61 to 111.66 millimeters. All right, so far it's only moved a little bit, so we'll tighten it up a bit more. And there you go, I make that 111.65 millimeters, which if I've done this right, is bang on. So to lock these rings in position, we've got these little retaining things, you know, the bolt screws in there, and then this hooks into one of those circles. But before we fit those, we need to make sure that the backlash is correct. All right, so I've got the diff on this bit of wood, just so that I'm able to turn everything. Um, and I'm pretty certain I can tell that the backlash is too much already. If I put my foot against the pinion here, to stop that spinning, and then move the crown wheel, yeah, I'm pretty sure that that is way too much backlash. And in fact, the fact that this screwing thing is quite far in and this one is protruding, that also tells me that the diff is probably too far this way, which would cause too much backlash. So I think I'm gonna wind this one in and obviously wind this one out by exactly the same amount, so that then we keep the pressure the same, and then I'll set up to uh, measure the backlash. All right, I've spent about an hour trying to set this thing up to uh, check the backlash. So what I've got here is my DTI gauge. Basically this pin here, as that moves up and down, it moves this around the uh, gauge, and it's super accurate. You know, you're talking about fractions of millimeters, and this magnetic stand that I've had for years, yeah, it's not that magnetic anymore. So um, yeah, it's really hard to get this set up. Ideally, this should be set up so that it's at the perfect angle going down the way the tooth is. And it's not, you know? That should be really more around this angle. But it's just taking me ages to set this up just because the magnetism is um, not strong enough. So yeah, I'm gonna hold the pinion here and then just rock the crown wheel with the other hand. And according to the internet, we need about 0.13 to 0.17 millimeters. Each one of these numbers around the edge is 0.1 of a millimeter. So I make that about, you know, it's less than 0.1 of a millimeter. 0.08 I would say 
or, it, or roughly 0.1 of a millimeter. So it is a little bit too tight. So I need to move it over this way ever so slightly by adjusting these uh, adjustable things on the side and then hopefully not spend another hour uh, trying to set this DTI gauge back up. Hello into another new day and I spent hours yesterday trying to set the DTI gauge up once I'd moved the diff over to increase the backlash and you know it got dark but I just about got it so that the DTI gauge was reading around 0.15 millimeters of backlash which is in the range of the specified backlash. The final step when it comes to you know setting up a diff is to paint on some of this engineer's marking onto some of the teeth and then turn the pinion so that the teeth engage with each other and then basically it leaves an impression on the teeth so you can see how well aligned the crown wheel is with the pinion. Now I'm no expert but as far as I understand it you want the marking to be somewhere you know, in the middle section of the teeth of the crown wheel. It's probably quite hard to see, but if you see there where it's taken the paint off of the tooth, where it's engaged with the pinion, to me, that definitely seems like it's in the middle of that crown wheel tooth. So I think I'm just gonna quit where I'm at now, uh, and I'm not gonna mess around with this diff anymore. You know, I've always wanted to have a go at setting up a diff and yeah, it's not easy. Um, I think maybe I should try and get Inky or someone to actually talk me through how to do it properly. It would definitely be easier if I had a vice to hold the diff in. But yeah, at this point, I'm just gonna leave it as it is and send it. There's tension on the bearings, there is some backlash, and it appears that the crown wheel and pinion are meshing okay-ish. So we'll leave it at that. So for now, we'll wrap this up and we'll tuck it in the corner because I won't be fitting it today, but there is a couple of jobs that I've been meaning to do in the last couple of videos. So um, yeah, I want to crack on with them before I end this one. All right, first up, I've bought another boot latch. Now I was thinking that I was going to have to remove these riv nuts, fill the holes with fiberglass and then re-drill uh, slightly higher up and put new riv nuts in there just to you know make this part of the latch closer to the bit of the lock that turns around to engage with this to unlock the boot. In fact, what I think I'll do is I'll just drill these holes out so they're bigger. So that'll still give me, you know, a millimeter or two of adjustment probably. And then what I can do is I can probably make sure it's over that way and then maybe twist it this way just so that, that catch goes up towards the lock more. And the moment of truth, will it work? Nope. The lock won't meet the latch. It was actually sliding over the top of it like that. So now I'm looking at maybe moving this down a bit. If I can take all this apart uh, and maybe put that washer the other side of this, maybe that washer is supposed to be the other side of this. Because um, yeah, I did take this apart I can't remember why. Oh yeah, to tap the thread on there. I did actually take this apart. So maybe my whole issue that I've been having was that I put this back together in the wrong order. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and see if that washer will go the other side of that plate. And it's not really gonna work because this has to lock in with this bit. Maybe I'll just have to bend this a bit. I can bend that down maybe. Let's see. Well, that seems to work. Quality, we now have a boot lock again. All right, so I've made a couple more tweaks. I basically took that lock apart again and bent that down a bit more just because sometimes it was still riding over the latch. That's fine now. Um, I've also added a couple of washers on the back. I actually had to replace the nut on the shaft of that lock because the old one broke when I was putting it back together. And that nut's a bit thicker than the original one, which has meant that there's more thread poking out here, which meant there was enough thread for me to put some washers. Yeah, I've done it up tight enough so that 
it's you know keeping the lock nice and tight in there but loose enough so that it turns and yeah i'm happy the only thing with it now is it doesn't really spring back on its own um which is fine you know you just have to turn the key and then turn it back yourself and that is all the time i'm spending on that boot lock <laughs> such a simple thing has caused me so much grief <laughs> anyway on with the next job which is another one that i was hoping to do in the last video i uh, just noticed my light is uh still in the engine bay from when i was uh dealing with the steering rack in the last video i was looking for that yesterday anyway what i want to have a look at now is fitting this breather to my catch can using this fit in here and this nut this is a weird thread it's a m10 by one so you know i made sure that i bought an m10 by one nut so yeah this should be really simple i shouldn't have said that i loosened the jubilee clips and pulled the breather pipes off and then i undone all the little allen key bolts to pull the lid off of the catch can with the hole in the lid enlarged and the lid and the catch can cleaned out i attached the new fit in to the lid with the nut and then it was time to put everything back together with the lid screwed back on, I then fitted the breather with a Jubilee clip and then it was just a case of reattaching the breather pipes. Sorted. Alright, well this video was yet another one where I assumed I was going to get moored back on the road. But uh, yeah, setting up the diff definitely turned out to be a bit harder than I was expecting. But that is at least partly down to the fact that my DTI gauge stand has lost its magnetism. I'm still not fully trusting that the diff is set up correctly, but you know, it's only got to last longer than the next half shaft to snap. <laughs> now, one thing I did forget to put on the diff is the little retaining clips that um, lock the adjustable things on the sides. So yeah, definitely need to remember to fit those before I fit the diff into Maud. But yeah, I'm planning to get Maud and hopefully Esther back on the road in the next video. This morning I went to the grinders to pick up Esther's can buckets and I actually took a few more down to them and changed my mind about um, how much to grind one of the ones that I'd already taken down to them. It's all very confusing, but if I've done my calculations right, every single bucket should be absolutely perfect apart from one. So um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, before I go, I've got to send a massive thanks out to David Coogan for donating me a diff. Massive thanks to the guys at Inky's Autos for worlding it up. And uh, as usual, massive thanks to all you guys that regularly get in touch with your advice. I'm sure there's going to be some advice about the way that I've set the diff up. But at the end of the day, it's just a welded diff. I'm not sure whether I would you know, have a go at setting up uh, an LSD or anything like that. But um, yeah, it was good to have a go at setting the diff up for Maud this time. So that's all I've got for this video. If you did think it was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe if you're new. Feel free to follow me on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram. Check out my website for merch and parts. Massive, massive thanks to my patrons for your ongoing support. I'll leave all the links to everything in the description along with my email address for anyone who wants to contact me. But other than that, until next time, thanks for watching.